If you're old enough to remember the 90s, you most likely remember these. TV VCR combo units, sometimes with a DVD player built in too. It gave us the convenience of not having to disconnect the Super Nintendo every time we wanted to watch Ace Ventura. You could just leave the Nintendo hooked up, pop in a tape, and if you were like me, you probably tried to record yourself playing Mega Man even though you were absolutely terrible at it. They seemed to appear out of nowhere in the mid-90s and suddenly everybody had them. At the time, I thought they were a new idea, but as it turns out, the idea is a lot older than that, and I happen to have a very interesting example sitting right down here. Inside this case is not a TV with a built-in VCR, but a VCR with a built-in TV. I realize that sounds like splitting hairs, but you'll see what I mean when we open it up. Let's take a look. This wonderful example of 80s industrial design is the Citizen VCP-5MU. It's a portable VCR with a built-in color CRT display. It was manufactured in 1986 by Citizen, which from what I can tell appears to be the watch company. I don't know if that's the case, but the logo definitely looks the same. According to a March 1987 issue of Popular Science magazine, the original price of this unit was $600. And if you're willing to shell out an additional $150, you'd get the optional battery pack and charger. Adjusting for inflation, that would be over two grand in today's money. So, a mid-level gaming PC. Or two mint condition AFI loose change split EPs. Or a mortgage payment. A 1987 popular mechanics piece points out the portability of the unit makes it perfect for peddlers doing product presentations. Now, I'd like to show this off for you. Unfortunately, I'm not a salesman with a presentation tape. I'm an idiot who tattoos people for money, so the best that I can do is an embarrassing old home movie I dug up at my parents' house. So I'll just subject you to that here in a minute, but before I embarrass myself with it, let's just cover a very brief history of the VHS format. The first commercially successful videotape recorder was invented by Ampex in 1956, but it was only used by studios because it cost the same as a house. While still only used in broadcasting, the VTR saw advances like the adoption of color in 1960 and was being manufactured by several different competing companies, most notably JVC and Sony. I bet you can guess where I'm going with this. In 1969, JVC, Sony, and Matsushita Electric, who we know today as Panasonic, they collaborated on a home video format that they called the U-Matic, which wrapped a tape around a spinning head. For details on that, I'll link to a great video by Technology Connections where he covers how all of that works. The U-Matic didn't sell very well to the home market, and so after a final devastating orc attack, the Fellowship broke apart, leaving Sony to come up with its own format, which came to be known as the Betamax, and JVC to continue building on the foundation of the U-Matic, eventually creating VHS. There is a much deeper history, which I will cover on this channel, eventually, probably, but that's all that matters for this. So let's fire this up. I hate watching myself on camera. <laughs> the thing that always excites me about these finds is when we manage to get the entire package. This one has the case, a set of RCA cables, and a 12 volt car adapter, or as we called it back then, a cigarette lighter adapter. This thing would have been great riding around in the back of my parents' old Ford Taurus station wagon. Now the eagle eyed among you may have noticed something very important lacking on this unit. I have incorrectly been calling it a VCR. That stands for video cassette recorder, and that is not correct. This is a VCP, a video cassette player. It has no record function. It's meant for watching and watching only. Having said that, let's take a quick look around this machine. The front has four simple control buttons, play, rewind, fast forward, and stop eject. It has a few interesting quirks here. Once I play it, I can't rewind or fast forward the tape until the head drum completely stops spinning. Then it'll actually respond and eject the tape. I had to clean the idler wheel also just to get it to eject the tapes without wrecking them. There's an eighth inch audio jack for if you want to watch this on the go, but don't want to be a jackass and disturb everybody around you, which is kind of the opposite idea of a modern Bluetooth speaker in a public place. Then at the bottom you have your volume control, your tone for the audio, which really does make a huge difference on this little speaker, and the picture adjust, which doesn't do much on this little screen, but it does function as expected, and then the tracking, which I'm not going to touch. In conclusion, I am really stoked on this 22 pound box of 80s. I didn't even know it was a thing until I had it like in my hand, and the carry bag with it. This is the kind of thing that made going into places like Circuit City and the good guys really fun when I was a kid. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll leave you with a little montage of this thing with the neat old video cassette cases we had lying around because I love the artwork on these. Mm -hmm.